It's National Seafood uh, Month, and we're here in the Chafalai Basin, which is the home of so many uh, great species of seafood uh, that we uh, produce, uh, and a great tourist attraction. Just uh, to hear the local concerns and what we can do on a local, state, and federal level to support our industry. We figured there's no better time to promote the great outdoors of Louisiana. We are the sportsman's paradise. We are the number one producer of so many species, number two overall next to uh, Alaska, and um, it's, a, it's a way of life for us. It's a living for people here in the Chafalaya Basin and all over Louisiana, and it's a part of our culture, our history, and such a big part of tourism. Uh, our seafood and the way we prepare it uh, is a party behind every meal. So this is a, a great uh, time to celebrate our seafood during this National Seafood Month. And uh, we're traveling all over Louisiana today to all these special spots to hear the concerns of the local elected official and the people that live on the bayou that make a living uh, in these swamps and uh, let them know that we're, uh, we're supporting and promoting our great Louisiana seafood. We're having problems in the basin and all, and we want to really stress that the future of this area, St. Martin Parish, and the entire state, is tourism. You know, uh, we're looking at it. I appreciate him coming today, you know, and hearing all our problems that we have. He's going to do the best he can to, to, you know, try to help us out on it. But uh, him coming out here, and especially in the swamps right there, shows the people that, you know, he's for us. And I... Uh, I'm really honored that he's there today, and you know anything he can do for us, we'll really appreciate it. S seafood, it, it's a staple of all of the locals. I mean, I mean that's all. That's the main part of my sustenance. You know, the fish, turtles, crawfish. I, 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 my dad was born and raised in the Chafalaya Basin, and, and I still fish and hunt and trap. Uh, well, not trap anymore, but I used to trap. But I, I get a lot of my uh, my food supply from the waters of, of Louisiana, and many many of the locals alike. And all of these people who come to visit our our, our state. They want to enjoy that delicious seafood and that, those delicious, delicious meals that is only unique to this area, you know? Seafood, is, it was our life. I've been fishing on my own since 12 years old. I still, I still commercial fish some, and I'm the mayor, but I have the opportunity to help our fishermen. And look, we, we got to, fishing in this area, is, it's, hopefully it's there forever. But the way the swamps and everything, the detrimental of it right now, we don't know how long, how long it's going to last. If it continues the way it has been in the last 30 years, the swamps are going to be gone. We have to do everything in our power to keep that from happening. There are ways. The Corps needs to listen to a lot of the, the locals, I, I think. You know, use common sense with a lot of things you're doing. I know they go in the books and, and they do it their way, and that's not always the right way. I'm not saying we're right. I'm not saying we're right, but the ideas we have, we know is going to help. And that's as much as you can act for right now. I'm, I'm real proud and, and, and I'm appreciative of, of him showing up here and giving us an ear on, on some of our issues. Another issue also is um, it, it's a federal issue that uh, right now there's a move by the CISP. They're, they're trying to petition U.S. Fish and Wildlife to um, uh, list the, the, the red swamp crawfish as an invasive or injurious uh, species. And, and it's, it's all tied in with the Lacey Act. And if that happens, I hope they're not successful on doing that. It, it, it's going to uh, cripple our ability to be able to transport our live crawfish across state lines in, into the other parts of, of the country. Uh, because that live, that live species, according to the Lacey Act, you, Lacey Act, you can't transport that creature out, across, out and across state lines. So that would injure our, um, cripple our, our, our crawfish industry quite, quite, quite a bit. I, I mean, the farmers and also the wild, wild caught, because the red swamp crawfish is in our, our local uh, crawfish uh, farms and ponds. You know? So we need to watch that and make sure that that doesn't happen. Of course, the imports, uh, uh, unchecked imports, especially of the crawfish. Uh, you know, the Chinese drywall uh, made people sick and, and destroyed homes, yet we're eating their products that are coming here unchecked. And that's a federal level that hopefully after the, the, the election, uh, Louisiana will be able to lead the fight to have some kind of inspection of those, those uh, imports to make it a, a fair playing ground for Louisiana products. We also uh, got to do a better job of getting the Corps of Engineers to listen to our needs in, a, in our lifetime. So many of the problems we talk about and talk about year after year and never get resolved. Some of it has to do with the flooding we recently saw in Louisiana, but also it's the way of life here in the bayou. Uh, we need the Corps of Engineers to be here to support us, not tell us what to do, and hopefully uh, leading a delegation of lieutenant governors that have similar issues from around the country 
we can get our legislators to really start changing some laws that will make it easier for these people to survive uh, their way of life that's been in the family for many generations. As we're talking, uh, Lieutenant Governor, a tour bus has uh, just uh, brought a lot of uh, out-of-state tourists to Louisiana. Tell us a little bit about the importance of this area as a tourist attraction. Well, we're going to start doing a better job of promoting the great outdoors of Louisiana. And this is the jewel right here, the Atchafalaya Basin. It's like nowhere else in the world. So the buses have just pulled in. Tourists are, are loading the boats. Uh, they'll see things out there they won't see anywhere else. And uh, we hope to do a better job promoting that and bringing tourists from all over the world right here to the Chafalaya Basin. We can get the tourists to meet the people and see what you do and hear your story. That's why they come back. The food is, is just extra and the music, but, but it's the people. We treat people like they're family. Nowhere else in the world do they get that feel. And so they want to come back because they feel like they're coming home. So long as we never lose that, we've got the world to welcome to Louisiana. We just had a great meeting in Delcom with some of the, the packers, the seafood processors, and the fishermen right here with their boats behind us. Um, it's a great opportunity to talk and promote uh, National Seafood Month, but also to hear from them. Some of the things we're doing through the Seafood Promotion Board, the value-added packaging, working with LSU Ag, a great program that's helped fishermen get more money for their product. The, the boat to the to the to selling right off the boats that program's going well so uh, although the, the shrimp catches are down a little um, I'm inspired by the passion and love they have for continuing this tradition for many years and we're just glad to be here to support them and hear new ideas everywhere we go around Louisiana we've got some great ideas about tourism about the seafood industry and uh, we're going to mix it all up in a gumbo and uh, do great things in Louisiana. Well, to talk to the Lieutenant Governor about our shrimp, about our shrimp industry with the imports and everything else. I've been shrimping all my life. I've been a shrimp all my life. I don't know nothing else. That's all I ever done was being in the commercial fishermen industry. And just about prices. We have up and down prices all the time and what's going on with our shrimping industry. What kind of an impact is imports having on your business? Import is having a bad impact on us but it's terrible we have no prices at all for our shrimp because of the import I wanted to see what the lieutenant governor had to say and he did say a lot of good things to try and help us all out out here you know I mean they built this place right here for the fishermen and we do good business here we really do because in fact we, we live in Homa we out of the port of Dulac but we do all our business here but since this facility has been built right here for us, it's helped us out a lot. Louisiana is the number two seafood state in the entire nation, so only after Alaska, we're right there at the top. So in the lower 48, we are seafood. It's because we have wetlands and we have this huge, immense, renewable natural resource that is a powerful economic driver here in the state. We're going to be leaving the dock here in Delcom and we're going to be heading over to Tabasco. And uh, it, it's just a great opportunity to see some of the waterways, some of the people that don't get out on a boat very often. I've been a boatsman my whole life. So looking at promoting the waterways and a boat trail in Louisiana and getting people off of land into the boats, especially the Chafalaya Basin, so many rivers around the state, great opportunity to see beautiful wildlife. And the ecotourism is such a big thing these days. We've got to do more to promote the beautiful outdoors of Louisiana. What is the connection with outdoors and uh, Louisiana seafood and tourism? Well, you catch the seafood outside. Uh, seafood is such a, a, it's a party, it's a meal, it's, uh, it's every time it's an event. We don't just cook food, it's an event. So it's such a big part of tourism. People come down here to eat the Louisiana seafood, but we want to do more in getting them out to the docks, getting them out on the bayou to see where it's caught, and they really can appreciate the beautiful landscape, uh, the areas out there, the the uh, estuaries, it's where the, where the shrimp are caught. It's just a great opportunity for them to see more than just the restaurants in the cities of Louisiana, but getting them out in the beautiful outdoors of Louisiana and see how beautiful outdoors really is. This is National Seafood Month, and we appreciate your being here to help us celebrate that. And I would now like to introduce Mr. Tony Simmons and invite him to come up and say a few words. In two years, uh, McElhenney Company will be 150 years old, 2018. The McElhenney Avery family will have been at Avery Island for 200 years, and New Orleans is going to celebrate its 300th anniversary. So 
Uh, a year and a half from now is going to be a huge celebration for all of us, but a big part of that celebration is about the seafood that Louisiana is able to create. And, you know, it's a real funny thing, but Tabasco seems to go really good with seafood. So <laughs> that combination has been there ever since my great-great-grandfather, Edmund Macklin, he first invented the sauce uh, and began to sell it commercially in 1868 because one of the first places he was very successful in selling Tabasco was in oyster uh, restaurants in New Orleans uh, in the early part of the, the uh, 1868, 1869, uh, were some of his first customers. And uh, people rapidly realized that Tabasco and seafood uh, were just made for each other. So uh, we appreciate uh, working with the Seafood Board. We've had a relationship with Louisiana Seafood Board for quite a few years, which we have found to be productive. And we think the Seafood Board finds that partnership to be productive with us. So thank you for coming out. Uh, we hope you enjoy the food. Uh, and with that, maybe I'd introduce uh, Senator Norby Sharbert, who's going to talk to us a little bit. When, when Karen and the governor asked me to come out and talk a little bit about the importance of seafood naturally, growing up in Chauvin, Louisiana, a tremendous fishing community, uh, having family from cut off and, and knowing what uh, it means to crab and shrimp a grand sum at oyster, fin, uh, uh, oyster fishermen and uh, so many family members in the seafood industry. When I got elected, it was a shock to me to find out that uh, the Seafood Marketing and Promotion Board was actually housed under the Department of Wildlife and Fisheries. And, you know, it's a wonderful relationship and the McElhaney family was telling me how well they work with wildlife and fisheries here to preserve things like the black bear, which has recently come off the endangered species list. Um, but it's an enforcement agency, and it's, it's, it's a conservation agency, and not really so much a, a, a marketing agency, although they do a great job in allowing our commercial and recreational and, and sport uh, anglers and hunters uh, to know the rules, know what to do, do a great time of setting our seasons, although I, I wish they'd just push back teal season just a little bit further, <laughs> but uh, we don't get involved in all that. But I, in discussing with some of my colleagues, I said, now here we have a whole statewide office dedicated to marketing and promoting the great state of Louisiana. And it just seemed like a very, very natural fit to me. Uh, and, uh, and as I was sharing with some folks earlier, you kind of come from a marketing background. It's just like everybody says, well, we maybe need to make government work a little bit more like business. Well, that just seemed like a smart business move was to take the seafood board, which is responsible for marketing the best seafood in the world, to the world, and put it in the agency responsible for marketing our state. Well, just like everything else in government, you would have swore that I was trying to reinvent the wheel, take away homestead exemption, you know, raise taxes, Lord have mercy. But when you talk to people and you share with them the things that make sense, and you don't do things based on the people that are in office or the people that have been in office. You do it for the right reasons. And moving the Seafood Board to the department, to uh, the Lieutenant Governor's office and the Office of Cultural Recreation and Tourism was uh, one of the things I'm most proud of in my entire uh, time in office. And when you do that, like I said, you never want to draft legislation towards who is in office or who may be in office. But let me just tell you, I could not have imagined that the people of Louisiana would be smart enough, and this ain't, let me get a little political right now, to elect somebody with the passion and the enthusiasm for our state like the current lieutenant governor. I mean, anytime you meet him, anytime you see him, uh, he shares, uh, like I do, an incredible passion for the people, the places, and the products of Louisiana. And, probably our best product that we have uh, goes hand in hand with Tabasco and like, like he said, seafood is arguably our greatest export to the world and uh, it certainly goes hand in hand with that uh, great pepper sauce made here right here on Avion. So without further ado, let me introduce uh, the good Lieutenant Governor of the great state of Louisiana, Mr. Billy Nungessa. Norby, thank you. A lot of people don't know, our families go back many years. Uh, my father was Chief of Staff to Governor Treen, 
And uh, that's when the Republicans, Democrats, argued on the House floor and went out to dinner that night together. And by morning, everything was settled. So but hopefully, you're still like that. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> I want to thank the McAuley family for uh, what you do for Louisiana. It makes my job easy. When we talked about visiting some places today to promote National Seafood Month, uh, the first thing I said is we've got to come to Avery Island. Um, there's not a place we go where you can talk about seafood that you don't talk about putting Tabasco on it, in it, around it, dipping it. So uh, it is a passion for me, having come here as a kid, and when I came back recently to open the, to cut the ribbon with the family at this restaurant, to see the improvements, the investment that they have made here to, uh, to share with the world the way they make this great Tabasco, uh, I was all in. And we most recently went to South Carolina with Garden and Gun magazine, and we took eight chefs from Louisiana to take over eight restaurants. And uh, first thing we did when we went in, we wanted to see the Tabasco. Because if we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna cook and prepare and serve Louisiana seafood, uh, we've gotta have Tabasco to go with it. So I'm glad to, to report back that all eight restaurants were good to go and we were able to move forward. Uh, a lot of people don't know, I, I grew up, my father owned a shrimp factory. Uh, Algiers Canning Company in Algiers, Gem in the Ocean was the brand of shrimp and crab meat that he produced there. And that was back when I was a little boy and we'd drive to the docks. My dad would buy a load of shrimp, he'd shake the man's hand and go back the next night and pay him. It doesn't work that way anymore. But so I've got a lot of uh, commitment to the industry and as we travel, all of these docks and coastal communities uh, where the seafood is a way of life, it's the way they make a living, and they give us that great seafood to promote to the world. We do have great history and culture and places, but it's that food, it's the way we prepare it. It's not just a meal, it's a party that makes Louisiana so special. And I'll share one quick thing with you because I think it's a thing that makes Louisiana so special. Recently, we were able to go to Canada with 28 tourism officials from around the state. And I got up to give a boring speech like I'm doing here today. And I said, look, I'm gonna stop and let each of these tourism folks speak about their area and what's special to them. And I was so proud as they stood and spoke about the passion they had for their town and their city and, and what they represented but while they spoke, I went around to each of the tables and I asked the tour operators and the travel agencies from Canada, tell me why you send people to Louisiana. What is it? Well, you heard the food, the music, but each one of them had a story about something special. There was a senior group that in Lafayette, they pulled them out their chairs and made them uh, dance the Zydeco. In Crowley, they were eating bread pudding and they went in the kitchen and got the, the chef and sat down and taught him how to make the bread pudding. And then the couple that got lost get into Poverty Point and they stopped at a store and the gentleman said, follow me, and took him a half hour away and said, here's the gates right here. Overwhelmingly, it's the people. Those people, those Canadians told me, when you send people to Louisiana, they always come back with a story about the way you treat people like family. And that, that is what we have that is so special, besides the Tabasco. <laughs> but, but, but as long as we never lose that passion and love for life here in Louisiana, I've got the greatest job in the world. Thank you for giving me that opportunity, and it's a real honor to be here with you today. So thank you. The Louisiana Seafood Board is here to just help promote our fishermen, help promote the product, get the word out, give support. I mean, it is such an incredible part of our culture and our history, and we just have to be sure we're preserving it. As we get into a, a little more of a commodity world, sometimes that's a, a challenge to keep these fourth and fifth generation families in business. So we want to do everything we can to back them up. What does the Louisiana seafood industry mean, not only to the state, but also to the nation? Well, you know, it's huge. I, I mean, here in the state, it's a huge part of our economy. I mean, there's so much based around it. It goes all the way through to our restaurants. It helps attract tourists. So it's a big part of that. You know, nationally, there's been an 
unfortunately such a move to import seafood but that also means there's such an appreciation for what is here. Only 10% of what we eat nationally is domestic, and Louisiana is a huge part of that. And so we've got a lot of people in the nation who want to come experience it and enjoy it. What can people do when it comes to supporting domestic seafood from Louisiana? Ask, ask, ask. Ask where it's from. Look at the back of the package. And you know what? Not only is it important to help support these Louisiana businesses, but it's important for your health. We like to say when you know better, you eat better. So be sure, look at those packages. Don't be afraid to ask them, hey, what do you have back in the kitchen? Let me see the box. I want to be sure that we're eating domestic. LouisianaTravel.com. You can click on there and get all the information, all the great places in Louisiana to visit and where to get some of this great seafood.